So last week, an unfortunate Reddit user set up a new wallet on a new cold card Mark IV. They sent 0.4 Bitcoin to it, but within a minute of doing this, the wallet had been drained by a scammer. What the hell happened? They were totally stumped, so they posted on Reddit, and after a bit of backwards and forwards, they worked out that they had created the wallet using dice, but they'd only added a single roll. Turns out they rolled a five. Now, to be fair, their cold card would have thrown a bit of a warning, and this behavior was actually partially fixed in a February firmware update, but it sent me down a bit of a rabbit hole to see who else may have lost funds due to dodgy dice rolls in their wallet creation, how many users might still be at risk, and whether other hardware and software platforms actually have the same issue that we saw here. Going down this rabbit hole also created dilemmas of its own in terms of what to do with wallets that I found along the way that still had funds in them, you know, how to notify those owners and how to share the information in this video without simply creating a how-to guide for cracking wallets that are vulnerable like this. So let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe so you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. If you're wondering how something like this can happen, I talk about how your wallet existed even before you started using it and the scale of these numbers in this video over here. The tool I used to check for these, you know, dodgy dice wallets was actually a lightly modified version of BTC Recover. That is a recovery tool that I maintain. Uh, you can find out more information about it here, but I will not be sharing how to modify BTC Recover to use it in this way. I'm not interested in uh, publishing or sharing cracking software. Uh, in terms of what I checked, I basically checked up to 11 dice rolls. I checked up to six uh, hexadecimal small characters and four uh, cards drawn if you selected that mode of generating a wallet. You know, this isn't meant to be comprehensive. This is just meant to check the really low hanging fruit, you know, the kind of stuff that people are exploiting now uh, and could easily do so within 24 hours of this video going live. The blockchains that I checked for wallets were the Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, really just clones of Bitcoin under the hood. So it's actually easy to check them all at once. And one thing I did not do was circle back around and have a go at cracking any weak BIP39 passphrases on top of the seeds in this set. You know, I'm not really interested in cracking people's wallets in this video, just seeing what is out there. So here is what I found. So the good news is there were dozens of these wallets, not hundreds, which is great. Uh, though the market has been pretty quiet for the last little while, so that would certainly help. Uh, as expected, a bunch of these wallets did look like they were people just testing stuff, uh, but not all of them. What I did find was about 22.5 Bitcoin that had passed through these wallets and the vast majority of that was taken by scammers. The vast majority of these dodgy dice wallets I found were on the Bitcoin chain. You know, there was a few thousand dollars worth of value on various alts, tokens and whatever, but it was pretty much a Bitcoin chain thing. The other interesting thing about these wallets is they were mostly created fairly recently. Most of them from about mid 2021 through to now with a bit of a spike uh, towards the end of last Last year, you know, I'm guessing that's probably to do with the uh, FTX collapse and the drama around that. Just looking at the entropy that went into these wallets, I do think most of them were created with dice. There were a handful of wallets that were just using, you know, raw hexadecimal characters, the kinds that aren't on a dice. Uh, and that was, you know, only about uh, 0.8 Bitcoin worth in addition to the funds I found earlier. I also did find one wallet that was generated using playing cards from Ian Coleman's too. And uh, this person picked the eight of diamonds. In terms of the wallets that I found along the way that actually had funds in them, I sort of just gave them a bit of a bump in that I sort of moved their funds out and uh, back in again after a couple of hours just to you know help the wallet owners know there's something not right with their wallet and hopefully prompt them to move them to a actual secure wallet. The simple reason why all of these wallets were not secure is because they were created using a low amount of entropy. That's a technical way of saying the amount of randomness that goes into creating the seed words for these wallets was far too small and could be easily predicted or worked out by an adversary. But the simple point that I want to make really clear in this video is that if you use dice to create your wallet and you used anything less than 50 rolls, your wallet is not secure over the long term. You know, this is the minimum number of rolls you need for a 12 word seed. In practical terms, anything less than 15 dice rolls is at risk today and should be moved immediately. Any wallet you create using about eight dice rolls or less will pretty much be taken instantly because the scammers are just monitoring those addresses automatically. Though the important thing to say is this number could easily move up to about 12 within about a week if people know there are funds there to be had. In terms of processing power and storage, you know, it's really very cheap for scammers to set up an automated tool to sweep anything all the way up to about 13 rolls a couple of times a day. The best way to think about this in terms of low entry wallets is a little bit like a rising water level. You know, as the price goes up, as the cost of computation and storage goes down, more and more of these low entry wallets are going to be getting cracked. And this is important to understand because just because your funds have been there and haven't moved for a couple of months, maybe even a year, does not mean that they 
they are safe. In terms of other hardware, I uh, went through my collection of hardware wallets here and I checked uh, Seed Signer, Crux, Keystone, Bitbox 02 and Jade and none of these devices will let you create a sort of weak entropy dodgy dice wallet. In terms of software tools, you know, Ian Coleman's BIP39 tool does allow this. You can enter a small amount of entropy and choose which length of seed you want. It does give you a warning. And that brings us to the cold card, which I actually mentioned at the very start of the video. Because cold card actually allows you to choose to use the onboard random number generator, uh, to choose to use dice only, or to choose to use the onboard number generator and to mix some dice in there. And one of the things that actually happened last year with the Mark IV being launched is the ability just to create a seed using dice only it became an option that you could select as part of the default new seed generation workflow rather than being hidden in the import menu. And up until the February 2023 firmware update would actually allow you to create a seed with as little as one dice Roll. It did give you a warning, but this was one you could just sort of enter through rather than having to like scroll to the bottom and click a number like some of the other warnings cold card gives you. Even today, at the end of October 2023, if you create a seed through the temporary seed workflow, it actually will still allow you to get through uh, with the same low number of dice rolls that it did back in Feb for the sort of default seed creation workflow. I'm guessing the fact that it's still available there is just an oversight. When you combine that with the fact that even the deterministic dice process includes language around mixing and sort of shows you this little hash along the bottom you know it's easy to understand why people maybe thought they were mixing in entropy from the TRNG uh, with their dice rolls when really they were just using their dice rolls only. A really good example of the challenges that go along with user interface design particularly uh, making really advanced devices accessible and safe for newer folk to be able to use. Though it's important to say, the increasing availability of wallets which allow you to select the first 11 or 23 words of your recovery phrase yourself and it will just generate the checksum uh, word for you, you know, this feature actually increases the risk of this kind of thing happening where someone might just pick you know, 11 or 23 words that look good to them for whatever reason that actually end up not being very random at all. At this point it's also important to say that without folk publicly owning up to losing their funds and how they did it, we actually can't know for sure which hardware, software or other platforms people might have been using to create these wallets. You know, if you're wondering why you would use DICE in the first place rather than using your hardware wallets onboard random number generator, you know, the answer is generally to do with uh, wanting to make sure that any sort of malicious or accidental bugs uh, in the random number generator don't put your wallet at risk. Generating your own entropy for a device rather than letting the wallet hardware or software do it for you is an advanced feature. And letting your hardware wallet or your software wallet generate your recovery seed for you is actually the most secure thing for the vast, vast majority of users. If you're someone who doesn't want to trust the random number generator, generation on your device, I would suggest that another really good alternative for this is actually consider adding a BIP39 passphrase. And the added benefit of a BIP39 passphrase is it also gives you an extra layer of security for your backups. Because when you add a BIP39 passphrase that you have chosen, essentially what you're doing is mixing entropy from your device if it selected the seed for you, and then adding your own entropy as a passphrase on top as an additional layer of security. Uh, I talk about selecting a secure but safe passphrase in this video here, and the thing I will say about passphrases is uh, just be sure you back it up to and test it thoroughly. Adding a passphrase is more complicated than just having a seed and it's important to say that every time you increase the complexity of what you're doing in your wallet you also increase the chance of you messing it up and losing everything. Okay so summary time and I just wanted to start with uh, a quote from Ryan Kasalucki who was someone who sort of uh, did a lot of work on the weaknesses of brain wallets a years back and he said that you know just because someone's passphrase is terrible does not give you the right to steal their money. You know please don't do it. Please don't blame the victim, you know, don't be a jerk. And pretending that people don't choose bad password words, or in this case, bad entropy, doesn't help. You know, for me, I think this whole situation is a timely reminder not to underestimate the security that is provided through simplicity, and that trying to do things above your technical ability is dangerous. Don't be fooled by the marketing of every single hardware wallet vendor who says that their device, product, or service is always the best option for everyone. That is never true. The whole, you know, 80 IQ pleb thing is a bit of a meme in the Bitcoin space at the moment, but I actually don't think anyone is actually taking that seriously in terms of what it means to make self-custody available and accessible to folk who are actually like this. The simple truth is everyone has to learn. You know, we all start out as a noob. But the really important thing is the vast majority of people need to survive the learning curve. You know, don't be fooled by the survivorship bias that distorts reality when you only talk to or look at people who have been lasting in the space for years. You simply don't see or hear from the folk who don't make it. If we want self-custody for everyone, we need to do our best to make it safe.
Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.